Today I'm making the drive up to North London to see a wonderful charity called All Dogs Matter. They do really amazing work here in London where they rescue and rehome abandoned dogs. It's run by Ira and her team and today they've asked me to come and visit a really beautiful Labrador who's got some really big problems. Good boy. Good boy. He's a good boy. I was expecting this really poorly three-legged dog to come in and the van pulled up outside and we could hear the biggest woof ever, followed by the back door opening and Marcus jumping out. We instantly fell in love with Marcus, he's adorable. From the outset, Ira also noticed that the abandoned Marcus had a large lump growing on his leg. We thought that maybe the reason his back leg was missing was he'd had a tumour before, a cancerous lump, and it was removed. So we thought possibly the new lump could also be cancerous. So our thought was, look, this guy is going to be put to sleep if we don't take him in. Let's at least give him a chance. Let's get the lump tested. Hello, ladies. How are you? Hello, mates. You must be Marcus. Oh, you're a handsome chap. Oh, thank you. Big smooch. And he seems like in pretty good nick. If anything, yeah, he, he seems like he's been uh, well overwintering quite well. Marcus has been to the school of hard knocks. He has not got a home anymore. He's lost a leg. And now we see this lump on his leg. I mean, how much bad luck can one dog have? Are you worried? No. We'll be waiting with bated breath, hoping that that comes back as benign. Um, and as soon as we get that result, we'll sort of start looking for Marcus's forever home. That's our hope. He's such a special boy. Mm. And we're just hoping and praying for him. It'll be good. An extra kiss for luck. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you deserve it. Boy. Slowly, slowly. There you go. At Ottershaw in Surrey, Scott's longtime client, Ali, is getting ready for another trip to the vet. Slowly, sweets. Good girl. Her two-year-old boxer cross, Mabel, is limping badly on her right back leg and is now restricted to slow walks. Can't go hooning around. No, just boring lead walks. Slowly. Good girl. She struggles to get out of bed, and that's really sad to see. You feel awful, don't you, because you want, don't want anything you love to be in pain. Slow down. Slow down. It just doesn't seem fair. She loves to play. All she wants to do is play. So when you stop her doing that, of course you feel mean. You feel... I feel terrible. Ready? Go. Go on, Mabes. Ali has tried everything to help Mabel, from a regime of low-impact swimming to days of complete rest. Don't cheat. Keep going. But nothing is working. Are you tired? I've taken her to see Scott and we've tried the softly approach, we've tried the kind of non-intrusive approach of just rest and lead walking. The back leg, it's just not getting any better. If anything, it's getting worse. Good girl. Hello, Scott. gorgeous. Hi. Hiya. Ali and Scott formed a close bond three years ago when Scott helped Ali's first dog, Ruck, fight a long battle against cancer. Who is this? This is Mabel. Hello, gorgeous. When Ruck finally passed away, Ali adopted Mabel from the Battersea Dogs Home. Right from the start, the boxer cross had issues and needed rehabilitation on an old break in her left hind leg. Oh, wow, she's got some pace. Oh, hey. <laughs> Eventually, Mabel's left leg did come good, but within six months, she was hit by the latest problem. Good. good. I know it's not fair. I know. I feel sorry for her, and I shouldn't feel sorry for her because they live in the moment. She doesn't feel sorry for herself. Okay, you okay. Ali's hoping for solutions from Scott today, but also dreading what he may tell her. I need to find out exactly what the problem is. I dread most of all if it's spinal. It's so dangerous, and God forbid it's neurological and we can't do anything. You know, maybe that's what the scans will show. And so, of course, those fears are there. Come on, then. Good girl. you just got to take a deep breath, suck it up and deal with it. It's not me that's in trouble, is it? Sit down. Good girl.
go to the vet? Yeah? Off to the vet now. You'll be a good girl, won't you? In Twickenham, southwest London, okay. hedgehog enthusiast Anna is having some playtime with her one-year-old African pygmy called Hazel. She just wants to run. There's so much to love about her. She's got such a huge personality for such a little creature. She's very bossy um, and she will make it quite known when she's not happy. Oh, no. African pygmies were brought into the UK more than 10 years ago. Now hugely popular, they're the only hedgehogs that can legally be kept as pets. Are you hungry? But Hazel is so spoiled by Anna that this little girl is now suffering from an all too common problem. So Hazel is a little bit overweight, which has been an ongoing issue since she was little. But with internet community and forums, you start to realise that actually maybe she's a little bit rounder than most of them. Maybe there's a bit of an issue here. And obviously, the last thing I want is for this to develop into sort of other health issues. Ready? And you're going to sit in here? You get comfy. Hazel's expanding waistline is even more surprising considering her nocturnal activities. Hazel has a rather large hamster wheel and I've got a um, bicycle odometer on it. So when I say Hazel ran 9K last night, people are going, what? That's insane. How can she do that? And you go, well, you know, she's quite fast. She will outrun me, definitely, if she wanted to, she could. Hi, should we go see the vet? Today, Anna's taking Hazel for one of her regular checkups at Scott St Margaret's practice. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi. How is Hazel today? Here she is. She in her little hood that you've made for her. Having oh, a little no. visit to the vet. Hello. Receptionist Elle has developed a soft spot for this curvy patient. Hi. Hazel's here. Hi, Hazel. She's very shy today. You are a bit shy today. Let's get her in before we get her too stressed out for yeah. too long. Come Let's on, be three. Good. Let's be good. Head nurse Emma has been overseeing Hazel's weight loss programme. So I've not seen her for a while. Mm. So I'm we're struggling a little bit. With the weight, the weight issue. issue yes. yes. So last time we weighed her, she was just over 0.6 of a kilo. So we just want to have a check and see how heavy she actually is. There you go. What a good girl. Ooh, 0.63. OK, still a little bit... For her size, she's a little bit on the larger side it's of life. A bit round. Um, she's a little rotund, bless her. In an ideal world, we'd like her down to the half a kilo mark, maybe a little bit less. The African pygmies do need to be a little bit more svelte than what she is, so hopefully we'll get there. Emma is now recommending a stricter diet and definitely no treats for the little hedgehog. Making yeah, sure that it's sort of low fat. Yeah, all low fat. I think it's been an issue from when I got her. I think her breeder was quite generous in feeding and obviously it being my first hedgehog, I think maybe I've just been spoiling her a little bit as well. So let's keep on with the weight loss and, and the portion control. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully she'll uh, find that that little bit of a double chin might decrease a little bit. i tell you what, if you get rid of yours, I'll get rid of mine. Deal? Deal. Deal. Shake on it. Little mini hedgehog shake. <laughs> Get your leg fixed. Later that day, a very Come apprehensive on. Ali arrives at Scott's Richmond practice. Hello. Hiya. How are yes. you? Yes. I know, don't be scared. Hello, gorgeous. Hiya. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous girl. How are you? <laughs> are you all right? I'm hot and bothered, I think. What's happening? What can you see? Oh, she's walking quite weirdly, isn't she? And she won't wait there on the rear right. <laughs> Mabel is looking really bad, actually. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised to see her barely putting a foot down. We'll just give her a walk and let's see what we've got. Come on, sweet. So she's a bit marionette, I think. She's a little bit wobbly, but... I think wobbly is an understatement. <laughs> well, I think what's probably best is that we take you downstairs. You know you get VIP treatment. <laughs> All right, well, let's get cracking. Come on, Mabel. Come on, then. Good girl. Come on, sweet. Hey, let's attempt some stairs. Yeah, eh? that's always a That's going to be fun. I know. Come on. I know. You manage? 
Oh, good girl. That's it. Well done. Nice and slow and steady. She's stepping really slowly and she's looking more like an arthritic 15-year-old dog than a youngster. We're going to do a quick neuro exam right. and just have a look and see what's going on. Do you want me to do anything? Just sit there and talk to her because I'm going to be doing some pretty weird things to her. Right, we go. Mm -hmm. So that's Hammy standing. So that's quite good. It shows at least that she knows her leg is there. OK. Now let's see if she can move it like this. Yeah. That's where you struggle, isn't it, sweetie? So very, very weak on that side. With no sign of neurological issues, Scott is now testing for spinal problems. Nice, strong patella reflex. That's quite good. If that wasn't present, that would suggest that there was issues maybe in the lumbar, the lower lumbar part of the spine, but... So that's good news. That's pretty strong there, yeah. That's good. I know. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's weird. I'm hitting you with scissors. I know. I'm just going to have a feel of this knee now. I think, oh, she doesn't like it though. You don't like that though, do you, baby? Mm. So there's definitely a little bit of discomfort here. She's not impressed about me playing with that. It's not brilliant that there's movement in this right knee. And what that suggests is that either she's strained her cruciate ligament, which could lead to instability in this leg, or she's actually ruptured it. The cruciate ligament is a really important, very solid ligament that runs from the top of the leg to the bottom through the knee, and it gives the knee stability. In sports people, like netball players or football players that turn very quickly, that's when they can rupture and tear this ligament. All right, baby girl. All right, sweetie. There's some nice happy drugs for you, hey? Given a history, I just want to take some x-rays to look at the bigger picture to make sure there's nothing else going on. One, two, three. Good girl. This is troubling times for both of us. I can't hide it. She sees it. But the great thing about Ali is she's pragmatic. She doesn't want to put her head in the sand. She wants to know what's wrong with her dog and what she can do to fix it. And for that, I absolutely love her. So uh, what I'm going to do is lift her up and you're going to slide that underneath her bum. Okay. Ready? Count of three. One, two, three. There you go. Lovely. Good job. At the Richmond practice, Dr. Scott Miller is about to take x-rays to find out why Ali's two-year-old boxer cross is in pain from a chronic limp. Great. That's beautiful. That's great. Okay. Nice. Mabel has a long medical history. Before her adoption, Mabel had already had surgery on a break in her left hind leg. Now the right leg has also become a serious issue. Mabel is a genetic mess. As far as the uh, pool of genetics, she's definitely swimming in the shallow end. It does mean that this is a long road. There's a lot of heartache in store for Ali, uh, but I'm sure together we can surmount it. Just need to be in the room this time to take these x-rays, so this one. It's a very fetching outfit, Yeah, Ali. nice. Yeah, what do you think? It's longer at the front than the back. It's protecting your essentials, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I need protecting anymore. I'm definitely not having a kid. More kids. Oh, yeah. No way. You said that last time. No. <laughs> I'm deliberately trying to keep the mood light because I know Ali well enough to know that she'll be absolutely terrified of what might be wrong with Mabel. She's thinking of all the worst possible scenarios. Well, let's hope that these x-rays will give us some simple answers and we can get this beautiful but problematic dog sorted out. First, Scott looks at the x-ray of Mabel's left leg to check on her old surgery. Immediately, he has some disturbing surprise news for Ali. What we didn't have was a fracture in the patella. So the kneecap has got a fracture in it just there. But that would hurt, and yet that is the leg that she is putting all of her weight on. Because the other one has more problems than that. It just gives you an idea of how bad the other leg is, if that's the leg she's relying on. Can it be fixed, that, or will it just heal? It will heal given time. It, there is already a level of callus formation present there. So it's been um, broken a while? Then. It's been broken a while, yeah. Yeah. Should I have noticed that? It's... I don't think so, no. H how would you have? Because she's been flailing the other leg in the wind. There's absolutely no way that Ali, one of the most dedicated owners I know, could have picked up on the fact that her dog had a fractured kneecap. She couldn't have, because the dog literally is putting all her weight on that leg. And so, of course, anyone would focus on the leg she's dangling to her side, the right leg. 
It's, it's fine, it's fine, it's honestly, it's fine. Don't worry, it's fine, it's fine. We'll get on top of this, we will, I promise. So to see that and think, even a tiny fracture's got to hurt, hasn't it? So, not enough to not put the weight on, I guess, but I still feel sad that she's in any pain at all. That's not even the bad knee. I don't know why you're crying about that, that, that one. That's a good knee. <laughs> she didn't know. Oh, you couldn't possibly. You don't have x-ray vision, do you? Now it's time for Scott to examine the x-rays of the troublesome right leg. The right leg uh, actually doesn't look too bad. The x-rays have ruled out any serious bone damage, but what x-rays cannot show is soft tissue structures like a cruciate ligament. Scott is even more convinced about his diagnosis and will now refer Mabel to orthopaedic specialist surgeon Michael Hamilton. If it is a cruciate ligament, we can get it fixed straight away and finally give Ali some peace of mind, fingers crossed. I wanted us to have fun, but now I just want her out of pain. God, get a grip, woman. It's all right. No, no, it's not. I'm fine. I'm fine. Ali's as tough as they come. She's as tough as old boots, but she loves her dogs, and uh, they're her life. And the fact that Mabel is suffering, she's heartbroken. My new baby girl. Can't sleep forever. In nearby Iselworth, there appears to be a delivery for receptionist Leah. Hiya, what sort of sim for microchipping? But in fact, they're patients. Tortoise expert Jason is bringing in 16 of his unusual pets for microchipping. I've been waiting all day to see these. Wow. Hi Jason, nice Hiya. to see you and all of these little guys. Shall we go through? That'd be great. Great, I'll take these. Tortoises need to be microchipped for a variety of reasons. Some species are kept outside, so they might go for a walkabout and get lost, or they may well be stolen because a lot of these tortoises are worth a lot of money. It's going to be a challenging morning for Jo. Fortunately, she's being assisted by reptile lover Nathan. So I can see they've got little dots on them. Is that how we tell them apart? Or do they all have names? Yeah, they have names as well. We've got one called Bowser, one called Daisy, one called Lisa, one called Marge. Oh, uh, Mary and... I can't remember the other one's name. But this one here is called Bowser, who's the biggest and the greediest out of, out of the bunch. <laughs> and then this one's called Daisy. Oh. Jason has brought in two species of tortoises. These bigger ones are called Golden Greeks. Are these different or are they the same? Yeah, those ones are pancake tortoises that come from Tanzania and Kenya. OK. And they're soft-shelled tortoises. How big are the babies? Because they need to be five centimetres for us to chip them. This is just over six centimetres, this one. Great, so just big enough to chip. I think they will be quite tricky. Some of them are just on the borderline of, of the size for, for chipping, but bearing in mind they do wiggle a lot, it will be quite difficult, I should imagine. We'll start with the biggest ones, and um, if you want to take a seat in the waiting room, and then we'll let you know okay. when we're done. Lovely. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Let's start with Bowser, and sure. we go on to wrestling. Okay. How's a fiddly job? In a cat and a dog, we've got a nice big scruff that we put the microchip in. And in a tortoise, we have to find a tiny little bit of skin in front of their legs. So it's a lot more tricky and it'll get more difficult as we get down in size. That's done. Let's pop some glue on there. See the little hole there. Who's next? Uh, this one's Sue. OK. Tortoises have become trendy pets, but they cannot be imported or sold within the UK without special permits. There is no legal limit to how many tortoises an enthusiast like Jason can own, but they must all be microchipped. OK, one species down, one to go. After completing all the microchips on the Golden Greeks, it's time for Jo to really test her skills with the very tiny pancake tortoises. You've got to be so careful doing these tiny little pancakes. Just as well, Scott didn't do this. I think my fingers are smaller than his. There we go. OK, now we have number nine. Should have given them names instead of boring numbers. What's a good name for a tortoise? Go on, Joe. I'm sure you can think of something. Mm, Sheldon? <laughs> Michelle? <laughs> 
So things can go wrong, which is why they need to be at least six centimeters. If they're too small, then we can go too deep. And worst comes to the worst, it cannot be implanted under the skin. It could go um, too far in and it can go into the, the actual abdomen. That would be painful. Let's just check in. Perfect. Last one done. Tortoise marathon is complete. Tortoises were lovely. I love the little pancake ones. None of them tried to bite us, which is fabulous. All 16 chips, so they've got their unique numbers and all their paperwork's up here, so they're all done. Okay, well, thank you very much. You're thank welcome. you for all your hard work. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Gently. It's a new day in Ali's quest for answers about Mabel's painful lame leg. Come on, sweetheart. I know. Scott has referred her to orthopaedic surgeon Michael Hamilton. Ready? Here we go. I'm very hopeful Michael will find a solution. He's the expert. I'm not. Um, Scott's recommended him. So, yeah, I'm really hopeful that after today I'll know where we're going. OK. Good morning, Ali. Hi, Michael. So, it's lovely to meet you. Um, Hello. Nice to meet you. So nice this is Mabel. Mabel. Hello, darling. So I've heard lots about you. Oh, she's gorgeous, isn't she? I don't care if Mabel's wonky or limpy or a little bit odd, as long as she's out of pain. Um, and I know she's in pain, so we need to fix it. Should we go in then? Let's okay. have a look. Go on. Come on, sweet. Go on, darling. Let's have a look. So as Mabel walks in, clearly there's an issue with this back right leg. She's got a very kind of straight ankle, which is uh, not normal. I have some thoughts about these ankle joints. So this would be what is our heel bone. Yeah, this, this is where we thought the problem this, was. This bit here, that would be our heel bone. Yeah. You and I walk on the flats of our feet like this. Uh, dogs walk up on their toes. toes. She's very, very, I mean, look, at this is a good leg. She's very, very straight on this yes. leg. This confirmation, this very straight-legged confirmation, potentially, helped. yes, won't have helped. Now then, I have some news for you. Mm -hmm. She's ruptured her cruciate ligament. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm going to show you a little test here. So I'm going to put my finger on the front of her shin. Yeah. I'm going to hold her knee still and pull up her toes. Yeah. And that, the way it pulls on the muscles, it kind of mimics weight-bearing on her knee. Okay. This finger should not move. And that finger is moving. is moving forwards quite significantly. Is it sore? It's, is it sore? It's probably uncomfortable at best. It's painful in people, for sure. We see this very commonly in young, large breed dogs, but we can fix these very successfully. We're going to do a procedure called a TPLO, and that stands for Tibial Plateau Leveling Osteotomy. It's a very complicated sounding thing, and the analogy that I tell all these owners is, if you stand on an icy hill, you skid down the hill, and that's what uh, Mabel's knee is doing at the minute. The bones are skidding around like this. And when we're finished, the bone is flat, and there's no hill, and the knee is stable. And the prognosis is excellent. It's really good. And we do hundreds of these, and um, they usually go back to normal function. She doesn't have much luck, does she? <laughs> no. Yeah. She hasn't had a lot of luck from the beginning. No. It's sweet. Till he found me. Hey. <laughs> I think we get her in today, we sort the cruise shit out, then we see where we're at and we'll take it from there. Mabel has got a good attitude. I think she's going to be using that leg straight away. The problem that Ali might have is trying to keep her quiet, which in many ways is a nice problem to have. I'm going to take <laughs> your pooch off you and stabilise her knee. Don't worry, she's going to be fine. She'll be good for you, I know she will. Oh, she's lovely, yeah. She's no trouble. No, she's lovely. She's a sweet dog and she handles it with grace, really. So. I owe it to her to just try and keep her fixed. Right, Mabel, let's do it. You follow me, darling. Let's go this way. I'll see you tomorrow, Ali. All right, then. Thanks. Take care. Slowly, baby. Come on. You're a good boy. In Richmond, three-legged rescue dog Marcus is heading in to see Scott. Here we go, baby. Come on, slowly. Four days ago, samples were taken from a worrying lump on the Labrador's leg, and the results are now back. Hello, Nina. Hello. Oh, yeah. How okay. great to see you. Yeah, me too. Hello, Marcus. Hi, Gina, look at this guy. What a handsome Hi, fellow, Nina. isn't he? 
Hello. Hi, Say puppy. hi to Gina. Oh, lovely kitty. Yeah. Nina has been helping to look after the Labrador since he was saved by a dog rescue charity. Cuddles are over, mate. Uh, me and Nina need to have a chat, so let's go into the concert room, shall we? Come on, Come on then, big guy. This Even one... though Marcus is very happy, loves his walk, loves being around us, there are a few signs that are a little bit worrying. He drinks a lot of water, he gets tired very quickly. I'm ready for the best, but I'm also a little bit ready for the worst. I'm a little caught out by the result that we've got. Mm -hmm. We found some cells called spindle cells. Right. And spindle cells um, are the starting blocks of a type of tumour. Mm -hmm. um, and the worst case scenario is it can be an incredibly nasty tumour called fibrosarcoma, which can spread to all areas of this dog. Um, Do you think it has spread already or will the cell just be in the tumour? At this stage, I don't know. And do we have a way to find out? We do, absolutely we do. What we need to do is determine if the tumour has spread, where it's spread and what type of tumour it might be. In this instance, the worst case scenario for a normal dog, you'd remove the leg. Mm -hmm. We don't have that option no, with him. No, we don't. We can't do that, obviously. I know and I can feel already how much of an impact this dog's made on you. So I He's know wonderful, Scott. I can't... I don't understand. How can people give up on such a loving dog? I, I don't understand. Today is a very difficult day. I wanted to burst into tears, but I didn't want to show this emotion to Marcus because being so happy in front of me and not knowing what's happening... <laughs> and I don't think it was fair on him, so I did hold on to my emotion and try to keep the happy face. Scott will now take x-rays of Marcus to find out if the cancer has spread. We don't know what's going to happen. Scott will soon come back with a verdict. No matter what, we will never give up. You need to be full of hope and you need to try. And this is where I think his kindness has paid off because finally, with you, with me, with us, we won't let him down, no matter what. Damn right. Mm. There we go. Oh, good girl. She's a good dog. I expect your dog to make a full recovery, because not all of them make a full recovery, but the vast majority of them do, uh, and that's what I'm expecting with Mabel. OK. I might just get in here with her, I think. <laughs> there we go. Michael will decide later this afternoon if Mabel's recovered enough to go home with Ali. OK. Get well soon, darling. All right. OK. Oh. Look at this guy. Oh, hello. This handsome fellow is Marcus. Oh, hi, Marcus. Hey. In the treatment room at the Richmond oh, Clinic, Head nurse is Emma it? is about to join Marcus's growing fan club. Honestly. Oh my God, look at him. I know you said you were bringing me a new man that I might fall in love with, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah? Isn't he gorgeous? Test results have confirmed there are signs of cancerous cells in the lump on the Labrador's leg. The lump needs to be removed, but Scott will also take x-rays to find out whether there's any sign of other cancer cells throughout the rescue dog's body. Thankfully, He's incredibly oblivious, aren't you? You just love all the love and attention. Oh, you don't look. care. You don't care. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and just all the rest of us feeling very melancholy. Oh, you're such a silk. Look at you. Hmm? What we need to do is do various x-rays in order to determine if the tumour has spread, where it's spread, and what type of tumour it might be. Whatever God or not you mm -hmm. pray to, let's just pray that this dog is going to be OK. We're going to need the lights off. That's it. There we go. X-ray. 
With Marcus's foster carer Nina waiting nervously upstairs, Scott and Emma are about to look at the chest x-rays. Is this just normal? Yeah, there's no tumours we need to worry about there. It's looking pretty healthy. Okay, good. Let's move on to abdominal x-rays then. It's hey. good news so far, with the chest clear of tumours, but they also need to check the spleen, the area that Scott is most worried about. Generally, this type of tumour will spread to the spleen, but so far, so good that looks like a nice, beautiful, healthy spleen of a beautiful dog. So that's good. So I'll go and give Nina that good news and then uh, you can get set up for taking the lump off. Will do. There isn't any presence of cancerous lump, so that's really great news and it does mean that at least at this stage, the cancer hasn't spread. So no uh, tumours I can see, all right. So uh, nothing in the chest, nothing in the abdomen. What I need to do now is to actually move forward to surgery. Okay. And I'm gonna be taking the lump off. Brilliant, oh, yeah. I'm so happy, right. oh, I'm so happy. It's brilliant, very good news. Thank you okay. so much, right. Scott, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All the best. But while Nina is feeling more positive, Scott is well aware Marcus is not out of danger yet. This is a rocky road and I don't know where it's gonna go and I only will know once I actually remove the mass. Your mum's there, Sue. Where is she? For Mabel, however, it's time to go home. The Boxer Cross has made a quick recovery from the surgery to fix her ruptured cruciate ligament. Hello, Ali. How are you doing? I'm all right. How all right, is okay. she? She's all right. She's all right. Yeah, come on through, come on through. She'll be pleased to see you. Owner Ali is ecstatic to be reunited with her two-year-old and hoping that her worries are finally over. Hello, darling. There she is. Hello. Hello, monkey face. She's been great. She's been really good. Wish her all like that. Do you mean that she's in a happy place? <laughs> she's in a very happy place. Oh, oh dear. Oh, nom, 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 nom. It went really, really well. Uh, her cruciate was completely ruptured. Her meniscus, the shock absorber thing, was badly damaged as well. No surprise. Uh, so that's been taken out. The knee is now stable. Mabel can be started on a gentle exercise programme of 10 minute walks from tomorrow. She's already putting a little tiny bit of weight through the leg, which is what we would expect with this op. So, yep, there you go, there's a lead. Okay. Pop that on her. Brilliant, okay. thank you. It's my pleasure, it's my pleasure. Thanks. Michael's done a great job, as I expected him to do. I mean, he was recommended by Scott. I trust Scott, I trust Michael. You know, he's a northerner, he gave me straightforward answers to the questions I asked him. So, yeah, how can I not trust another northerner in the south of England? <laughs> She's under the influence, so I hope she's not driving. Come on, then. So, uh, right, off we go. Come on. It's a lovely feeling when we see the owners reunited with their pets, particularly when we've done a procedure where the prognosis is so good. Come on, darling, up you get. One, two, three. No messing about. Come on, one, one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, good you go. Girl. Nice and slowly, and you'll see her getting better every day. And if she doesn't, let me know. Mabel came in harder using that leg and quite painful. And, you know, give it a few weeks' time, she's just going to go from strength to strength. Come on, that's it, good girl. This way, to the car. That's it, good girl. I can't wait to get her home. She'll relax a lot more when she's there. All her beds are waiting, her tea's cooking. We just need to get her home where she's loved. <laughs> what a good girl. Sizable, I'll give it that. The operation to remove the large tumour from Marcus's leg is about to begin. Oh, look nice. So I am concerned about Marcus's future, but I need to hold fire on my concern. I need to be there for Nina through the process. We'll send it off to the lab and fingers crossed. If Marcus is lucky and the tumour turns out to be a low-grade cancer, the Labrador has a good chance of survival. I mean, I still have hope that we'll get a result, which means that he will live a number okay. of happy years, but we just need to be patient uh, and be prepared for the worst as well. So it's, it's, it's going to be a tough wait. Yeah. Today is a very difficult day, but I have to hold on tight about the fact that no matter what, we will do our best to give him that quality of life. Will it be a month, six months, a year, two years? I have no idea. But during that time, for sure, 
he will be cared for and never ever found himself abandoned again. You've got a nice bed waiting for you. And I know someone who's going to sleep next to you tonight, and that's going to be me. Just to make sure you're okay. Yeah. It's time for Nurse Emma to check if Hazel the Hedgehog has had any luck with her Battle of the Bulge. She definitely looks a little bit smaller. Mm, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Let's have a look, shall fingers we? Crossed. Come on. The last time we saw Hazel, she was a little on the larger side, so we're hoping that she's lost a bit of weight today. At her last weigh-in, Hazel tipped the scales at 0.63 of a kilo. Moment of truth mm. on the scales. Come on, you. 0.58 kilos! Fantastic! Oh. So she's lost 50 grams. That is great. That really is good. absolutely incredible. I'm just really proud of her. Just giving smaller portions and changing some of her snacks for um, less naughty snacks. She's responding really well and I just feel she's done really good. Little high five. High five! Yeah! <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, good boy and good girls. We've got a really good dog here, haven't we? As for Marcus, he's loving all the attention he's getting with his foster carer, Nina, and her two other dogs, Sadie and Django. Do you like your new friend? Yeah, he's that nice. He's that fun. Oh, little sweet. We need your bandage off. And you'll be fine. Oh, no. It's been three days since Scott removed a nasty lump from the three-legged Labrador. <laughs> Sit. The results have just come back, and tests have revealed that the tumour is a low-grade sarcoma cancer. But while it's malignant, it's not aggressive. There is a big chance that it might regrow in the same area. And if we have to remove the tumour again, then we will do. But the chances of it actually spreading to other parts of his body are really low, and so that's really good news for the future of Marcus. Wow, what a nice ball you've got. Django, come on, come and bring your ball, slowly, slowly. <laughs> and that's not the only good news for Marcus. He's going to stay with Nina and her family for the immediate future. Obviously, we hope for the best and we will see what happens, but for the moment, for sure, he's really happy and he's fine. You are doing very, very well. You're getting better by the day. Slowly, sweets. And six weeks after the operation to fix her ruptured cruciate ligament, Mabel's out of pain and back to her boisterous self. The last week's been noticeable in her spirit. She's been shoving toys at us and desperately keen to play. Good girl. I'm glad I did it. It had to be done. Um, but what I am glad about is how well she seems to have recovered. Mentally, she's ready to go. Physically, you know, the surgeon's really pleased with the results at six weeks. So, I mean, I couldn't be any more pleased. Yeah, she's looking great, isn't she's she? She's in she. Today, Scott's dropped by to check on Mabel's progress. After the long journey with Ali, he couldn't be happier. She's walking really pretty well. I mean, two good amounts of weight on both legs. She's using it all the time. And but... you feel that's getting better and better oh, each definitely. day? definitely. It's always an absolute treat to see my mate Ali outside of the practice, but even better to see beautiful Mabel and the fact that she is walking so well and looking so happy and so comfortable, as close to a normal dog that Mabel will ever get is great news. To other people, she'll look like she's got a limp or she's not right, but to me, I know that's as good as it ever was. Yeah, and it can still get better. Yes. Great. All the arduous tasks of lead walking only and building up the time and everything, it's paid off. Hopefully in another six weeks, she'll be off the lead and it'll all be a distant memory. <laughs> Come on. That's it. Hey, you can walk now. I love her to pieces. Um, I think she's got a face that only a mum can love. She's not, you know, loads of people think she's ugly. I think she's beautiful. She doesn't have a bad bone in her. I know she's not human, but she is my little baby girl. Come on, Mabel. Come on. Come on. That's it. Get a wriggle on. That's it. It'll be arthritis next. It'll be the elbows. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, should I book you in for next week already? <laughs> I think I should have an annual slot. <laughs> <laughs>